have you ever noticed a spot or maybe several spots throughout your lawn that maybe look drier than other parts of your lawn. Even though you've been irrigating or hand watering or using a sprinkler, however it is that you water your lawn, you ever notice that some spots are sometimes just drier than others? Uh, and then you take your sprinkler and you try and water that area and you've seen the water just beat up and then run off, like it doesn't go into the soil. Or maybe have you ever watered a, a potted plant and seen the water level just kind of rise in the pot and it doesn't really recede into the potting soil or maybe it's slow to recede into the potting soil chances are that you're probably thinking oh, i've got compacted soil right these crazy temperatures you know have dried out my soil so hard that you know water can't get through it what you probably have is hydrophobic soil hydrophobic that's a big fancy word right comes from hydrophobia and hydrophobia stands for fear of water now your soil isn't really afraid of water right it wants water but hydrophobic is just the term that's used to describe soil that doesn't absorb water or doesn't take in water the first question that should be popping into your mind the logical question is well what is hydrophobic soil? What causes this hydrophobicity? There's another big word, right? You can use that at a party next time. So when I first learned the term hydrophobic in regards to soil, all the reading that I did, you know, terms that kept popping up were terms like waxy film or oily film, oily residue, that kind of stuff. And so apparently what happens is this. So on that upper layer of your soil, you know, where the roots are and then the part where the crown of the plant, you know, meets the, meets, meets the soil. You know, there's a lot of organic matter that builds up there. Grass clippings and leaves and dying worms and dying bugs and that kind of thing. One thing that's essential for that organic matter to survive is hydration, water. When there's a lack of hydration, either because you're watering wrong or you're not watering enough or your irrigation heads don't spray the right, you know, they don't cover the area enough, whatever the cause is for that lack of hydration in the soil. When that happens, that organic matter, organic material starts to die off. And as it dies and decays, it develops or it forms into this film, this oily film. And that oily film, that waxy film is what causes hydrophobicity. It's not the soil that it can't take water, it's the film that won't let water get through to the soil. Well, fortunately for us, one thing that we have at our disposal to help reduce, or in best case scenario, help eliminate hydrophobicity, are these things called wetting agents. A wetting agent is a type of surfactant, and that's, a, that's an important word for us to know in this lawn care hobby world. A surfactant, the meaning is in the name, surf act ent, surface active agent, surfactant. And so a wetting agent is a surfactant. Now a surfactant is things like detergents and uh, soaps, right? You use a soap to clean dishes, right? To get all the oily stuff off dishes. You use detergent to clean your clothes, wash off the oil and sweat and all that stuff, stains. You use uh, detergent to clean your car, right? To clean a, a, a kitchen counter or a bathroom counter or something like that. What a surfactant does is it changes the behavioral properties of water. It changes the surface tension of water. Well, similarly, a wetting agent, being that it's a surfactant, it changes the surface tension of water, making it easier for water to spread more, to cover more surface area. Now, my wetting agent of choice is this guy right here. This is called Soak Ore. Okay, and this is made by Matt Martin's company. Matt is known to many as the grass factor. I'm not using it because Matt is a buddy of mine and I'm certainly not making any money uh, from talking about it or using it in this video or anything like that. I use it because it's, it's just a good product, man. The guy makes good stuff. 
what I like about this wetting agent is that he did one extra little thing that really benefits people with my soil type. He added an acid to the formulation of this wetting agent. And what that acid does, and it's a very weak acid, it's not the kind that would burn skin or burn clothes or anything like that, but it's strong enough to help reduce carbonates and bicarbonates in the soil. And if you watched the video where I talked about acidifying my soil, then you know that I welcome any product that will help me reduce the carbonate load in my soil. And again, as far as the acid goes, it's non-corrosive, but still, you know, you want to use some gloves and you don't want to breathe it in when you're spraying. Now, as far as the application rate goes, the label says monthly applications of three to six ounces per 1,000 square feet and that those three to six ounces are to be applied with two gallons of carrier per 1,000 square feet, two gallons of water. Normally, the standard is one gallon per 1,000 square feet, but in this case, the label does state to use two gallons of carrier. It also states that if for some reason you use one gallon of carrier per 1,000 square feet, that you are to irrigate the area as soon as you're done applying, okay? And so, the least amount that I can apply, according to the label, is three ounces. So three times the square footage in my backyard, 3,250. I'm just gonna convert that to 3.25, right? So three times 3.25, and I get 9.75 ounces. I'm just gonna round that up to 10, right? I got my bottle here, here's 10 ounces. I got my bucket, I already put some water in it, right? So 10 ounces to treat my entire backyard at the three ounce per 1,000 rate. How can I see this? There we go. There we go. Mix it in. I'm a dumbass. I get so caught up in the video and saying the right things into the camera and all that stuff that I got to put on my gloves, man. I haven't gotten anything on me, but I just want to be safe. Now there's always some, some left in the bucket, so rinse it out again, throw that into your tank. All right, so now that I've rinsed out the bucket and dumped it in here, I still wanna make sure that I have the right amount of carrier, at least the minimum amount of carrier in the tank. So again, 3250 square feet in the back. I need to make sure that I have 3.25 gallons in my sprayer, at least, right, minimum. So since I did one gallon per 1,000 square feet, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the irrigation now that I'm done spraying. One thing I'll also mention is that most everything you've seen me apply to my lawn is stuff I've applied only to my turf areas. But like I do with my sulfur applications, the wetting agent is also something I wanna to apply to my flower beds. But that application is a little different simply because of the mulch in the beds. So for those areas, I'll be using a quarter of an ounce of soaker per gallon, and I'll use a bucket to drench the base of the plants or the area around each plant. Essentially, I'm drenching the mulch with my mix to get as much of the wetting agent as I can down to the soil. I'm just trying to ensure I'm doing what I can to make it easier for water to get to all the desirable plants. Now, on occasion, I'll wake up to this ugly sight. This is armadillo damage. They come out at night, they're looking for grubs and bugs to eat, so they root around and destroy people's lawns. It looks way worse than what it really is. And fortunately, I have Bermuda, so it recovers pretty quick, fills back in pretty quick. Here at the end of this video, I'll throw in a few seconds of me doing a quick cleanup mow in this area. Whew. All right, man. Uh, this pretty much wraps up this next episode of this is what I do to my lawn. Um, 
if you are new to this channel, my name is Jay and I'm all about promoting the essentials for home lawn care. Too much stuff going on out there in YouTube land where people are peddling a bunch of miracle lawn products and unicorn peas that do this and do that. Man, I'm just trying to promote the idea that the stuff that's good enough for golf courses and other performance turf facilities, it's good enough for me, man. It's good enough for you too. You know, for them, it's all about MPK, micronutrients, right? Some fungicides when humidity is high and that kind of thing. Um, maybe they're trying to fix pH issues like I am, like I do with the elemental sulfur. That's in a video that I did already. Um, today, you saw me do the wetting agent, right? Just trying to make sure that the water can get to where it needs to get to. Herbicides, man, pre-emergence, post-emergence, just trying to make sure that we got the desirable plant in place, right? And no weeds. I'm just trying to put it out there, man, that you can get away with quite a lot in terms of your lawn program with very little, right? Just give your lawn program a thought. Should you be doing this? Should you be buying that? Is this overkill? Is this necessary? Anyway, man, I hope you've gotten something out of this video, just like I hope you've gotten something out of the other few videos that I've put out. Um, until the next one, man, be good to yourselves. Stay cool. Be careful out in this heat and uh, be good to the people around you. All right. I'll see you later. Thank you.